Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to the Shenanigans Marvel Derby Classic number 36. We're already to go. We got 12 marbles on the track for the first race here on the paperclip. We're going to see who's going to be able to take in the first qualifier of the night. Hopefully, it won't be one of mine. There we go. The marble is ready to go. The slow motion really doing what it needs to be doing. Seesaw Mina is going to be coming up. In the running position as they go in through the first turn, very far out on the inside line. On the outside, Dr. X cuts down with a good boost of speed. The glorious mustache trying to hold it all together as the marbles continue to pace on through the course. Shens TV with a good boost of speed and their brand new diamond marble really making moves as they go to the inside line of the first backstretch of the first lap. See Sasmita around the bend again with the same line as in the first turn. Damage being dealt in the back with Spoon Tree and Tamaris have it at it as Dr. X and the mustache continue. Continue to fight for second place. Shens TV holding fourth for now, but else in the first is making up some moves in the middle of the pack. Cutting off Shens TV with a 49 blow to the back. And looks like they're going to take one from the mustache in return. Tit for tit and tat for tat. As we go into the second lap now, Sisa still holding the lead with a commanding boost. And it looks like Dr. X is still holding that second place position with Shens TV and Glorious Mustache taking chase from behind. Else in the first gets smushed by Tamri. He's just grounded to the asphalt with an absolutely brutal display of violence as we continue into the last half of this qualifier here. It's going to be Dr. X and the mustache around the bed. Seesaw still holding that early lead. Don't know how they got such an early start, but looks like they're going to be carrying it through the entire race as the mustache has to be Dr. X battle it out for second place. The marbles coming into the final stretch. Seesaw has it all but locked up here as they go across the line, and it's Seesaw all the way, ladies and gentlemen. Dr. Rex going to hold fourth place with the mustache and to be in second and third, respectively. That's going to do it for the first qualifier of the night. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, already underway at no fault of our own. It is the second qualifier of the evening, the Boomerang. And right out of the gate, we got Sensei, Balkar, Drusko, Spoochie, also the first Purple Tally, Wisconsin Lion fan, all fighting for first place, and fighting is an understatement as Purple Tally takes a lead pipe to the spine of the competition, and that's going to let uh, Sensei be completely eliminated in one fail swoop. Elsa the first, Rosco, Wisconsin Lion fan, giving it a lot of, oh, this because we're not in slow motion, and it would be why things are going so fast. As we go around the bend here, it's Elsa the first in lead. Jay Gaming coming around in second place with Wisconsin Lion fan, Rosco, Tamaris, Luca Valles, and Purple Tally all fighting for that third place position. Looks like Dabblebeck getting in on the violence in the back of the peloton there as they go around the last major turn of the first lap. It's Elsa the first and Jay Cliff Gaming. Neck and neck, well not neck and neck, it's about a third Marble like lead, and Elsa the first is putting on some more distance and go down the straightaway. Elsa the first really boosting their heart out here as they go across the line into the second lap and a very good inside dive to try to get a good line. Oh, but a bad bounce, and that's gonna hurt them. Going into the first minor turn. J Cliff came and closes the gap tremendously after that horrible line by Elsa the first. That's gonna put them in competition for that first place. Mission Drosko's not too far behind in third, surprisingly still holding on to the blue card despite the pink option now available in the shop. It's gonna be Elsa the first and J Cliff gaming round the bend on the outside. Droska cuts into the inside, blaming down, looking to drop on top of J Cliff game, but J Cliff's no spring chicken on this competition, and they're gonna take it nice and steady. As they go through into the straightaway. Out to the outside line. Jake Cliff and Elsa try and hold a good line. Droska cutting towards the middle. Jake Cliff cutting up into the inside. And it could be an interesting line from Jake Cliff Gaming trying to close the gap on Droska. Droska holding it, but not by much. Here goes Jake Cliff in second. Elsa the first in third. Trying to get through on this straightaway before the last major turn. Who's going to have the best line around the bend to get them set up for the final sprint? It's Droska in first place. Jake Cliff to the outside. Might actually be able to get a better line. Oh my goodness. Elsa the first swinging for the fences. Back in third. Just looking to take out the competition instead of beating them in the foot race on the final straightaway. And now they've got the speed as they go to the outside line. Druska's slowing down. They're running out of petrol. It's Elsa the first cutting into the air. They're like a madman going swinging wildly. Who's it going to be? It's a final finish, but I think it's Druska by an inch. It is. Oh my goodness. Elsa the first had the speed but couldn't keep control. The line absolutely guffs it on the final sprint. They had it all wrapped up. They could have just aimed a slightly more straight line. But no, the meandering of... Uh, <laughs> Else in the first will cause them the victory, and that's going to let Droska take it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the third qualifying heat, the Delta. And we're going to see how these 10 marbles are able to get themselves through this track 
I try to take that first place position. Here we go. All the marbles scattering across the line as they try to set it up for the first lap here. Tamri's out in front with Spoon Treats, Spoonpearl Tally, and Kira Zalka all trying to get that initial lead. Good boost of speed from Kira as they go through the first major turn. A little tussle and tumble there with Tamri's. Tamri's at half health already as the marbles continue to push through the first turn. Kira is going to have the speed and the dismount coming through in that first place position. Tamri's in second with a lot of good flame coming out of the back of that dragon floaty as the other marbles form a tight peloton for third place katie did it all at jaycliff gaming trying to make it happen as katie did it all takes a really hard shot to the nose by jaycliff and tamarys now falls back as kira takes a strong lead going through the final turn of the first lap tamarys at half health katie did it all missing her nose and bleeding down the front of her face it's a bit of a horrific sight but they're carrying on in the spirit of the competition and you gotta love the determination coming out of katie did it all right now as they overtake purple tally to hold third place going into this second lap it's Tamri's in second, but Kira Razaka absolutely gutting it here. Have you seen speed like this in your life with Kira Razaka screaming down the track like nobody's business? The world record 114, and Kira might be pushing that time right now. Tamri's in second as they go through on the inside line, trying to get a better line for the turn. Gating it all, still holding third, but behind by a mile as Kira Razaka's speed is completely unmatched by the competition right here. 12 seconds to go for the world record time. Is Kira going to be able to push it? Spoodry takes out Elsa and Tamrays hold second for now, but they aren't even close. It's about 90 marble likes between Kira and Tamrays. Our second runaway victory of the night, ladies and gentlemen. Kira Zalka pushing for the world record. 12, 13, 14. It's a new world record time by Kira Razalka. Absolutely destroying the competition. Have you seen speed like it in your life, ladies and gentlemen? You saw it here first. Kira Razalka, sub 14 on a solo sprint around the Delta. Absolutely phenomenal time, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, let's go. Here we are for the fourth qualifier of the evening on MSLA Raceway. Once again, 10 marbles looking to give it their all here as they cross the initial scramble into the first lap. Some damage already being dealt. Katie did it all. Still missing a nose. They just, <laughs> just had it reattached and it has already been ripped off vindictively by the competition. So it looks like it's a conspiracy out tonight against Katie did it all and a nose being on her face, but she is continuing on the competition nonetheless. Elsa the first. First one into the box turns Tamri's in a huge sprint into the second line as they go through Diablo Beck where's that speed coming from as they go to the inside of the next turn could be a little disastrous on the dismount if they can't convert it but a beautiful conversion forward to hold that first place position but Nelson the first hasn't give up yet a lot of speed coming out of these two marbles as they go around the bend it's Tamri's Jacliff and Katie did it all give it all the speed they got as they go around into the long bend trying to hold everything together out of the final box turn here it's going to be Diablo Beck in first and Nelson the first in second Jacliff cuts in with a huge Huge cut right through the middle. Trying to hold that second place position now. Overtaking Elson and Katie did it all. Still without a nose. Holding fourth place in the long bend. Here comes Elson from behind. J. Cliff dodges as they cut towards the middle. Diablo Beck ahead by about 50 marble lengths as they go for that first place position here in the first lap. But there's still another lap to go. It's J. Cliff and Elson battling for second. Katie did it all holding fourth with Tamri, Sensei, Balker, and Spoontree battling in the back of the peloton. Here comes Diablo around the bend. Coming up into the hairpin. It looks pretty good for Diablo. But J. Cliff Gaming is right behind. It's also the first and Katie at all giving chase into the major, major turn right before the straightaway. And it looks like Jacob's going to be coming out on top. Diablo Beck with a soft curve around the middle, trying to keep up her speed as they go for the straightaway. But also the first has a better line and more speed as they go to the outside line. And they're neck and neck with Diablo fighting for that second place position. Jacliff in first, ahead by about 60 marble lengths. Diablo Beck considers going for a pit stop, and in the last second decides to stop and go for the regular race instead as Tamrays cuts to the inside line, overtaking for third now with Katie Dahl. Sets a Balker in chase as well. Elson over the top, jumps on top of the median and drops back down again. Going to cost him a bit of speed, but give him a better line through the turn, and they're going to cut down towards the middle as they go through the box corners now, and it looks like Elson might be able to make a move. Katie did all with a good boost of speed in third. Jacliff slowing down in the front, letting the other marbles have a chance to overtake. As the Apple Beck comes up in sixth place as well. It's Jake Cliff in first. Elson making a huge move in second. Look at that line through the turn by Elson. The first tries to keep the speed as they go around the bend, but it looks like Jake Cliff's going to overtake as they come up into the last box.
box corner here. Elson cuts to the middle. Caden it all goes for the straight line, but hits the wall. Cut a little too early, and that's going to be a disastrous line for Caden it all. They're going to have to recover. Sensei Balker with a beautiful boost of speed coming down the box corner. Where is this speed coming from? Going twice as fast as the other marbles around the long bend. Sensei Balker's on a tear. It's also the first and second. Jake Cliff in third, and Caden did it all in fourth. But Sensei Balker, I don't know where this speed is coming from. I think they're actually using fusion propulsion, bending space and time around them to form a warp bubble to propel their marble unnaturally fast in a forward direction as they careen around the corner with no regard for their safety or lie, just going on blunt speed, and it's actually working out for them tremendously as Sensei Balker just careening around the course at breakneck pace. Here comes Elson, trying to overtake Jake Cliff in second, but it's way too little too late now. 70 marble lengths between Sensei Balker and the other two as they go down the final stretch to finish out the qualifier. Sensei Balker almost outrunning the camera as they cross the line to take the victory here in the fourth qualifier of the night. Congratulations! Ladies and gentlemen, the fifth qualifier of the evening on the new Marble Canyon. Here we go. 15 marbles. Ready to give it a go here. And already damage being dealt. I forgot we have large marbles, which means they are doing five times the damage of the regular marbles. And that's going to cause a lot of eliminations right out the gate. We are already down to six, and it's looking pretty deadly here as the marbles are just careening around the course. We're going to have to put this in a little bit slower time right now to keep up with the action. So far, <laughs> 10 marbles dead. Kane did it all. Purple Tau, Fear and Whiskey, Devilback, and Seesaw Speeda. The only five remaining right now after an absolutely brutal devastation on the initial starting line scramble. Purple Tau, he tried to take out Kane did it all, but Kane did it all is really riding those walls. When they say Marble Canyon, they mean it. They are using every last inch of this canyon to try to propel their marbles forward. Although, ironically, I think the fastest path is just to stay on the outside edge. And Katie it all just grinds Fear and Whiskey back in. <laughs> Once again, losing their nose in the process. And it looks like Katie it all has had enough. And now they're just using their nose as a weapon to slaughter the other marbles around them as the marbles go through the second lap. It's Purple Tally holding first. Katie it all wielding her nose, chasing them down in second place. Tablet back back at third and Seesaw's bring up the rear and fourth just happy to be alive and having qualified in the first race already. No pressure right now. It's Purple Tally into the straight line. There comes Katie did it all riding the wall in second. I'm not sure that's a good line to go but it seems to be working for him. There they go! Katie did it all strikes down another with her nose and it's absolute carnage here out of the track. Just three marbles remaining. We might have a first place finish by default as Diablo Beck and Seesaw's meet up really keeping their distance from Katie did it all with that nose in her hand. Here comes the elbow back in second. Seesaw speed in third. One last chance to try to overtake before the win is over, but it looks like Katie doll has got this one all wrapped up, just like her nose, as she goes into across the line, and Katie did it all finally taking the victory here in first place. The elbow back in second. Seesaw in third. Absolute carnage. Ladies and gentlemen, another new map of the season. Excite Marble! Tap it into the spirit of Excite Bike with lots of hills and jumps to careen the marbles up and down around the bed. And this is a very tight loop course single donut track. And it's all going to be about the line, the speed, and surviving the garbage. The marbles already going through six down, ten left as they go through this first lap. Already over with just 15 seconds. And the marbles continue to jump over one another. Trying to get across these bumps. It looks like not hitting the bumps really does get your marble the most speed needed. So avoid the bumps to get the most speed to get through this as quickly as possible. J-Cliff seems to have found the perfect... Perfect line around the outside. Has barely left the ground at all as they continue to go around these beds. Oh, but a bad bounce right at the last second. Gonna give someone a last chance to squeeze in. Spoochie goes to the line, but it's too little too late. That finish line right on the curve there. And Jake Cliff will tough it out and take the victory here on the sixth qualifier of the night. We might bump this up to 12, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Glade. Not sure why the marbles all just stopped at the start there, but it looks like they will finally get themselves underway here. We're going to be going clockwise. Thank God for another clockwise map. 
And here we go. The marbles trying to get everything squared away as they go through the first minor turn and the second straightaway. Damage being dealt once again, down by 13 marbles already. As Tukuyo holds the lead, going through that nice long bend. It's Katie did it all in second. Lugo Valos in third. And it looks like Diablobex is going to be trying to bring up the rear. Lots of collisions, lots of damage being dealt. And it looks like Lugo Valos getting ground to a pulp. Katie did it all, still wielding her nose as a vicious assault weapon. And it is really taking out the competition here. Spoontry takes out Wisconsin. Looks like Sensei Balker taking out Spoon Tree. And these marbles are not letting up as they continue to assault down the track. It's Fear and Whiskey, Diablobex, Sensei, Balker, and Foreman trying to battle it out for third. Foreman takes out Sensei, and that brings it down to three, battling for that position. Jacliff, Dr. X, Tamarins, and Cybernetic Kraken bring it up the rear as Takuyo continues to hold the lead. Kraken takes out Tamarins, another marble falling as they try to go for the sharp hairpin turn around the tire bend. It looks like Takuyo has the good line, getting it all around the bend with a wild one. Foreman with a good bounce trying to keep their speed forward as they go around the next turn and it looks like Tokyo's holding it out for now but it could all change as they go into the next stretch. It's Katie it all trying to get around the outside. Diablobeck, Foreman and Jacliff holding that third place position at the top of the peloton as Tokyo continues to hold the lead coming out into the long turn. It's Katie it all in second. Diablobeck in third. Here comes Jacliff, Dr. Rex and Cybernetic Kraken trying to bring up the rear. It's a still very close race with just the seven marbles remaining but a lot of marbles are barely alive every marble in the back at under half health. Katie did all at half health herself. To kill you, the only one at full health in the front pack right now, just trying to dominate the scene as the marbles continue to push through. Jacliff chasing down Foreman. Foreman running for their lives. Dr. X just trying to stay alive in the back for now as they go around the next two turns to line it up for the second lap. It's Tokyo still out in front by about 20 marble lengths. Here comes Katie did it all though trying to close the gap around the bend as they go for the first lap finish and it looks like it's going to be a good line from Katie did it all around the bend. Look at the speed. Look at the determination. Katie did it all really keep it together here closing that lead down to about 10 marble lengths as they looked across the line in the second lap. Katie did it all trying to make a move on the inside line as to Kill Yo holds that first place position, but not by much. It's Foreman, Diablobeck, Kraken, and Jacliff all changing positions as they go around into the next turn. It looks like Katie did it all going to the outside, to Kill on the inside, and now it's going to get dicey as all the marbles are converging in on the same spot coming up into this next turn. And Kraken rolls over Dr. X with absolute brutal force. To Kill Yo, take it on. Katie did it all. Katie did it all still swinging her nose wildly. She's barely alive. It might just be her nose at this point. As To Kill holds at half health in second place. Foreman looking to take out Diablobeck and squishes him against the rail. To Kill takes out Katie did it all. Kraken takes out Foreman. We're down to three, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely brutal here. Takeo and Kraken, two liberals that have not yet qualified, seem to have been overtaken by their frustration. They've just decided to eliminate the competition full stop and then just settle the race for themselves at the end. Jacliff in the back and third, just happy to be alive as they drag along the track. A couple parts of their body barely hanging on by just the skin as they continue to race down this course. And Takeo at half health, looking better than the other marbles by comparison, is going to be holding in first place with a commanding lead now as they go around in the hairpin turn around the tire track. Here comes Tukuyo, around the bend, cracking with a huge boost of speed. Looks like they might not be done yet. Jacliff Gaming in third place as they come around this hairpin turn. Tukuyo trying to find the perfect line. Looks like they got a good diagonal. Look at that line from Tukuyo. That's really going to cut down on their timing here. Bouncing off the inside wall as they go for a bend. Looking for that, but they've lost, lost, lost a lot of speed as they go for that final turn. But Kraken seems to not have done much better. Jaycliff in third as the marbles go around the long bend. Tukuyo in really good position now as they go around this long bend. Just a little bit less than half a track to go. As they try to finish out this qualifier here, the Glade uh, looks like Tukuyo is holding it all together. Kraken and Jaycliff way too far in the back to catch up now. And Tukuyo seems to have this one all wrapped up, but there are still two more turns to go. Tukuyo trying to keep everything together as they go around to the next bend. It looks like Kraken is holding their second place position, but Jacliff is not done yet. Tukuyo out in front, really putting the pedal to the metal right now. Kraken trying to find some boost of speed to put them back up into first place, but I don't know if it's going to happen at this point. As Takuyo continues to just scream down the track uncontested, it's Kraken in second, Cleakliff in third. Around the final bend, Takuyo still looking solid as they line it up for the final straightaway. Takuyo really putting it all here on the track. It looks like they've finally gotten it all together. Kraken has no answer. Jacliff can't do anything in the back, just happy to be alive. And it is going to be Takuyo across the line. Absolutely brutal here on the Glade. Takuyo in second, or in first, Kraken in second, Jacliff in third. And that's going to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, our eighth qualifier of the evening, it's the bracket. And we got 14 marbles ready to give it their all. 
on this qualifying race. So here we go. It's going to be Elsa the first taking the lead as they go around the first bend. And it is those two tight corners, the half pin, and then another two tight corners before another half pin. Let's see what the marbles can do as they work their way around these lines. It looks like it's going to be Elsa the first. Holding a pretty good line right now. Trying to find a way to keep this lead early on in the race. Katie did it all. Out in that second place position. Has been really making some waves here tonight. Oh my goodness. There go the deaths in the second turn. It's Tamri's on Dr. X, J. Cliff on Kedison and Kira on Tokyo. As Elsa takes out Sensi. Tamri takes out Kira and Katie did all takes out J. Cliff Gaming. Once again, wielding that nose. It seems to only be getting sharper the more she uses it. Elsa the first running for his life in first place. Trying to keep Katie did it all at bay. Lugo Valosos. Sporting a very strange geometric uh, energy shield. And we'll see if that does them any good in this qualifier. Katie did it all around the bend. Very hard line from all the marbles as they go around that bend. And it looks like it's going to be a rough one here. Katie did it all. Trying to find a line on the outside. Luga Valis up through the middle. Tambres and Fear and Whiskey. Not too far behind in the back. Holding those fourth and fifth place positions. And that is it. Oh my goodness. Katie did it all. Just back swings. Didn't even look. Elsa drops a grenade and blows up. Katie did it all with no remorse whatsoever. And just like that, we're down to two before the first lap is even completed. It's Elsa the first out in front, feared whiskey in second with full health, chasing him down and going through with only the two marbles remaining. Here we go, feared whiskey trying to find a way to catch Elsa as they go around the bend. They've got a nice glass marble with a duck trail behind them. The ducks might be slowing them down though as they continue to go through these bends. Elsa the first using the demonic powers of their marble to hold the lead position and take out the competition, looking to get around the hairpin turn right now. Then <laughs> that blowfish looks just as worried as the rest of the marbles do. Feared Whiskey going to the outside, trying to find a way to close the gap on Elsa, trying to push as much speed through out of their marble as they possibly can, but Elsa the first seems to be holding it together for now, but now we're into the final half of the second lap, and this is when the professional marble will make their move. Elsa the first holding the line on the outside. Feared Whiskey chasing and drafting Elsa the first all through these bends, and it could all come down to this final turn here. Elsa the first high on the outside. Feared Whiskey going to match him pace for pace. Coming up into the second line. Elston swings wide. Fear and Whiskey gonna mimic as well, trying to get a better turn on the dismount. Tries to go for the drop, but it looks like they've lost a lot of speed. Elston the first starts to pull away, and Fear and Whiskey needs to make a move now or never. Just one half turn left. They get these marbles through this course, and it looks like Elsa the first seems to have a pretty good handle on things. Going for it, tries to get a good bounce off the outside edge, but it could be too little too late for Fear and Whiskey as they continue to struggle to close the gap of Elsa the first here. The final straightaway sprinting down, trying to put it as much as they can, but Elsa's got it all bottled up, and they are going to take it. A lot of runaway victories here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And Elsa the first is no exception. We'll be securing their own spot in the finals just like that. Ladies and gentlemen, Lapsland for our ninth qualifier of the evening. Let's see what our marbles have in store for us here today as they go through into this race. This is Lapsland, an octagonal off-road derby. Lots of bumps, lots of lines, lots of wall rides, and the marbles doing lots of damage once again. It's absolutely brutal out here tonight. Marbles dying left and right. You'll love to see it on the derby scene. Let's see who's going to be able to tough it out this time. Kira goes for that initial lead. Fear Cliff Gaming takes out Fear and Whiskey. As the Lugo Valis, Farben and Dabries fight for that first place position. Lots of collisions as they continue to exchange places. Big blow from Stacey Kinnison to Dr. X. They're coming off the top of the bomb. And it looks like they're all going to have a lot of damage going through into this next section. Lugo Valis, the only one untouched so far. Eight marbles remain, and we're not even halfway through the first lap as we continue to struggle across these bumps. It looks like Foreman's holding a pretty good line of their own. Lugo Valis trying to get their speed back up, but they keep hitting those walls and bumps. Takuyo over the top of Tamarys and then down on top, dropping the sledgehammer right on top of the toes and taking Tamarys out completely. There goes Foreman across the line into the second lap as Lugo Valis holds second and Takuyo is now in third. Dr. X and Stacey Kinnison neck and neck and barely alive as they go around. And Elsa the first just happy to be alive as they continue to bring up the rear of the peloton. Lugo Valis finally found their speed, overtakes Foreman as they go through the next turn. Foreman tries to take out Lugo. Lugo trying to stay alive and keep the speed up as they continue to struggle with all these bumps coming across the course finally gets a good bounce around the bend and it looks like Lugo Valos finally making the foreman's completely blown out all three tires and they're now just spinning out of control
told the rims can't get any traction in the dirt and they're absolutely losing and they smacked right into a tree careening completely out of control foreman is down and out their vehicle completely losing all traction and steerability has completely lost it here as they've destroyed themselves at the top of the tree and to kill you somehow has found a way to overtake lugo Velos as we approach the final bends to kill with a lot of speed where is the speed coming from some unnatural christmas propulsion about the back of takeo has done it as they cross the line and take the victory lugo gonna have to settle for second place but takeo has already qualified which means we will default to lugo valos as the qualifier for this race so congratulations lugo valos absolutely amazing stuff happening on the last lap there but that is going to be takeo with a victory and lugo valos moving on to the next qualifier Ladies and gentlemen, our 10th qualifier of the evening, the circuit and 11 marbles looking to prove themselves here tonight on the track. The marbles getting across the initial scramble into the first minor turn. Going to be a lot of collisions here. Need to be careful not to get eliminated too early on in this race. If you want to have a chance to finish it out, it looks like Elsa and Lugo, Dr. X all battling in the back with Tamaris, Tequillo, Foreman, and Fear and Whiskey in the middle, in the front. We got a lot of marbles all slugging their way to that first place position. Sensi Balker, who has already uh, taken that uh, qualifying position, will be out in front just leading and trying to keep their marble warmed up for the inevitable final race. Here comes Jay Cliff and Kraken moving to the inside. Jay Cliff takes out Kraken with a very smart blow to the back. And Tequillo now holding third with Fear and Whiskey and Foreman and Feared and Whiskey might be the only one who's not qualified yet that is still alive. Tamaris and Dr. X in the back, they have a chance as well, but they're going to need to make some moves if they want to have a chance to qualify on this one. Sensei Balker out in front in first place. Here comes Jake Cliff Gaming holding second. Fear and Whiskey once again putting up some speed. Duke Kyo takes out Jake Cliff Gaming with a switchblade to the back of the leg, and it looks like it's going to be Fear and Whiskey holding third for now. Tamaris in fourth, Dr. X in fifth. The hopefuls trying to find a way to qualify here on this race, but Sensei Balker hogging the spotlight right now as they go through this first lap in first place with a very strong lead. 80 marble lengths as they cruise ahead, continuing to put on more speed into the final turn. It's going to be Fear and Whiskey and Tokyo battling it out for that second place position around the bend with Tamaris not too far behind. Looks like the marbles continuing to push through. Tamaris closing the gap on Fear and Whiskey. The Dragon Floaty really putting in the work here as they try to continue down, but those little cheap <laughs> those little chicks at the back of Fear and Whiskey cheering them on, trying to get it going, and Tamaris takes out Dr. Dr. X, one less, and there goes Fair Whiskey taking out Takeo. They're on a killing rampage. Tamaris might be next. Fair Whiskey needs to be careful here. Tamaris continues to push through on this straightway going into the second lap, and Tamaris is not looking to back down just quite yet. Sensei Balker going through, but Fair Whiskey takes out Tamaris with a beautiful club to the side of the temple, and that's going to get. Tamaris completely out of the race for this one. Lugo Valis in the back in third, already qualifying on the previous race. Just wants to be in here to keep themselves going. And there's morale high. Fear and Whiskey, the only marble that has not qualified, must stay alive and finish this race in order to qualify. Sensei Balker has the lead. Lugo Valos back in third. Fear and Whiskey just trying to stay alive in the middle. They're in a tight spot and they just need to keep their pace and not get greedy with it to finish out this race to have the qualifying position. Sensei Balker around the bend. Fear and Whiskey starting to get a little bloodlust though. They want to take out that fear and whiskey at the or the sensei balker out in the front but it might not be worth the risk if they could just finish out this race they've got it logo valis giving fear and whiskey plenty of room sensei balker giving the chase to fear and whiskey taunting them all the way sensei balker's actually running backwards with two middle fingers up in the air in front of fear and whiskey trying to taunt them into a bad decision but fear and whiskey is not taking the bait keeping their cool keeping their pace just happy to be alive but this is incredibly bad sports for sensei balker continuing to run back Backwards, flipping off Fear and Whiskey, but Fear and Whiskey is just not going to take the bait. They're going to keep the line. They're going to go around the final bend and try to finish out this race the proper way. Lugo Valles doesn't want anything to do with it. Way in the back and third, just happy to be alive. And that is going to lock this race up, ladies and gentlemen. Sensei Balker still running backwards around the final bend. Wait, Fear and Whiskey seems to not be able to take the taunting anymore. Just thinking about closing the gap, but they are going to back off. And it looks like the tempers are really rising on the track here, but that is gonna do it. Sensei Balker first, Fair Whiskey in second, Lugo Valis in third, and that is gonna give the qualifying position to Fear and Whiskey. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the brick for our 11th qualifier of the night, and the marbles all ready to go. 13 of them, in fact, as they cross the line with the initial scramble, trying to make something happen 
right out of the gate. And Dublix has already taken out Sensei Balker. Tambridge takes out Foreman. It is nasty right out the gate. And these marbles continue with the slaughter fest here going on for the Shenanigans Marble Derby Classic number 36. Also, the first is in the lead. Kirazaka just behind by about five marble lengths. And it looks like it's going to be CC Kinnison in third, Dublix in fourth, J. Cliff and Tamarys battling it out for fifth place. The Dragon Floaty has not suited Tamarys well, but they continue to stick with it, just going for this strategy. And these corners really keep the marbles clumped up, and that is going to cause a lot of damage to be dealt throughout these turns. And it looks like the marbles are going to be going in closer and closer as this race continues. Else it is still out in front, but Kira Zaka is holding that second place position. It's CC Kinnison in third with Dublix in fourth, Tamarys in fifth, Tequilio in sixth, Kraken in seventh, and Lugo Ballos in the back in eighth place who's already qualified and they're just here to have some fun kira goes to the inside with kira or kinnison holding the outhand side trying to find better lines around these turns Dublix swings for kinnison having gotten the taste for blood but they swing and miss kinnison tries to take on kira but it backfires and kinnison takes most of the damage kira's gonna have to be careful though Zinnison, yeah kinnison is not quite done yet else in the first still out in front Stacey kinnison barely alive crack and takes out to Kuyo. not that it matters but kira rosalka and kinnison are battling this out for second place just trying to find a way to make this happen it looks like cc kinnison has actually Activated the defect the defense shield to try to keep their marble alive, and Kira Zalka has resorted to a <laughs> Marx Brothers Groucho mask in an attempt to disguise their marble. That's hoping C C C C Kinnison won't recognize who it was that actually took them down to such low health. But I don't think Kinnison's going to be following for it. Elsa the first is still using those demonic powers to keep their marble in front, and they've taken the victory here. Kira takes second, C C Kinnison in third, and I do believe that means. CC Kinnison is the qualifying marble of the three. The other two have already qualified, so congratulations, CC Kinnison. The deflector field definitely saving their marble for the last half of that second race and getting them into the finals. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, the final qualifying race of the evening, the Saber. A lot of tight turns in this one. We'll see if the marbles have what it takes to navigate those successfully. Let's see who will be the marble to qualify for the final position for the Shenanigans Marble Derby Classic number 36. Already the marbles really exchanging blows in a heated clump. Less more damage that we can keep track of. I think Blase takes out Dublix. Foreman takes out Sensei Balker. Cece Kinnison takes out Bl Blase. And Kirozaka takes out Tukuyo. So an absolutely brutal exchange of blows once again in the first turn. And the marbles are continuing to deal damage. Jacliff takes out Cece Kinnison. Dr. X takes out Foreman. And is this Dr. X finally going to be making a move here? Dr. X has not qualified all evening despite being in all 12 races. And now they have a chance to make it happen. But they have to stay alive at the top of the back here. Feared Whiskey jumping wildly around the bend trying to outpace Dr. X and it looks like they got a pretty good boost of speed but Dr. X on the outside line will be trying to get a better line around this next bend. Feared Whiskey and Lugo both high in the air. Dr. X keeping it on the ground trying to get as much speed out of their marble as they can and it seems to be working as they're about to outpace Feared Whiskey going into the next turn. They have to be careful with the damage being dealt though. Feared Whiskey up high and around. Looks like they go for the inside line. Dr. X goes up the middle. Lugo fouls to the outside going around the next bend. More ex blows being exchanged they try to go through and Lugo Valis with a huge boost of speed after killing Dr. X and Dr. X is out once again. No luck for Dr. X tonight. Yeah, I hate to see it. Lugo Valis, Kieran Whiskey, Tamarys, and Kira Zaka. The only four marbles remaining as we just now get into the second lap. It's Lugo Valis out in front, but Fear and Whiskey is giving chase. Fear and Whiskey has qualified as has uh, Lugo Valis and Kira Zaka has as well. So really, I think it's only Tamarys right now. That has not qualified, and they will have to stay alive throughout this entire race. So it looks like right now their fate is entirely going to be decided by Kira Zalka. Kira Zalka at full health once again using the Groucho disguise to try to keep Eddie Marble from being able to identify who they actually are. And it looks like Tamarys is going to have to hold this position in the middle to keep their Marble in the race and get that qualifying position. Fear, Whis Fear Whiskey and Lugo Vallis out in front just having some fun trying to get something to happen here. Tamarys continuing to try to find a oh no kira takes out tamarys on the bend 
cutting underneath with an uppercut Mortal Kombat 2 style, and Kira Razaka has decided there will be no 12th qualifier for this race. They've locked up the leaderboard and closed it out. Lugo Valos, Feared Whiskey, and Kira Razaka just now in it for the victory lap of it all. What a shameful display of greed and unsportsmanlike conduct, but unfortunately that is the rules of the Derby, and we have to play by those rules lest the entire universe collapse in on the panic and disorder that would be in the wake of not strictly following every rule of the Derby every Wednesday night here on the Shins TV Twitch channel at 7 p.m. Eastern. Lugo Valos takes the victory with the emo corn? Is this emo corn? What is this? Is this cam on the cob? I have no idea. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are for the finals of the Shenanigans Marble Derby Classic number 36. Elsa the First, Sea Sauce Mita, Fear and Whiskey, Katie did it all, Lugo Valos, CC Kittison, Tokyo, Jacob Gaming, Kira Rizalka, Sensei Balker, Drahuska, and a did not qualify Tamaris on the 12th race. You hate to see it. All right, folks, here we go. 10 seconds counting down for the finals here. The Shenanigans Marble Derby Classic number 36. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed yourselves. And don't forget to stop by next week. Here we go. 11 qu uh, qualifiers into the race. And away they go. There's going to be a lot of damage being dealt on this one. Ooh, see, Elsa the first slams into the wall the first corner. And that's going to be rough, but it will put them in the back to avoid the rapid eliminations coming out in this course as we go through into the race. Sensei Balker slams in as well. Lots of marbles missing the line. They're not used to this track, and they're going to have to get the hang of it if they want to stay in it. But they also need to stay alive, so it's a bit of mixed strategy here as the marbles continue to weave through this course. Droska is out in front flying by using that afterburner, putting the Nitro's full pedal to the metal with that vehicle. It uh, looks like CC Kinnison using the defense grid already, trying to keep their marble alive. Takuya, though, with the unnatural Christmas powers, really pushing their marble forward as hard as they possibly can. Again, and Jaroska seems to be holding pretty well for now. We're already into the third lap now as Jaroska crosses the line to Kyo and Kinnison battling for second. Luga Valis holding fourth. Cisas Vita in fifth, barely alive. Fear and Whiskey in sixth and Sensei Balker in seventh and Elsa the first, almost half a lap behind in eighth place. Looking to just hold themselves together here. CC Kinnison, though, is now in the lead. Droska has fallen back to fourth place as Lugo Valis and Cisa Vita look to overtake. A lot of damage to be dealt coming up in the next couple turns if these marbles aren't careful. Sensei Balker to Kyo trying to keep up pace with the other marbles. Seesaw's careening out of control. Oh my goodness, they need to be careful not to get eliminated as they go around the bend, and they're going to fall back into second to last place. Here comes Droska, back into the front position. CC Kinnison holding the line in second. Lugo Valles and Fear Whiskey waiting for their opportunity to go, but we are already coming up into the fifth lap right now. As the marbles swing around these bends wildly, Sensei Balker holding fifth, waiting for the right time to strike. CC Kinnison trying to find a way to take down Droska, but Droska continues to show a lot of good maneuverability around these bends. They seem to have a perfect line, just hugging that outside line all the way through the turns, and they are not letting up at all. There goes Lugo, right into the side of the front of the collision there. Looks like Fair Whiskey Sensei Balker ready to change places. CC Kinnison takes a swing at Droska, but Droska has not suffered even a scratch right now, but there they go go a little wild on the outside edge burns into the corner holds the line into the second place position but Stacey Kinnison now has a chance to pull ahead fear and whiskey holding for third place sensei Balker back and forth and who knows where the other four marbles are they are not even close to the competition they're going to need a miracle to catch up but Stacey Kinnison smashes into the wall of the intersection and that's going to cost them their first place position and fear and whiskey of all people has now taken the lead as we go into the second half it's Jaroska over the top of fear and whiskey sensei Balker into the intermission it looks like it's going to be fear and whiskey holding that second place position Chasing Droska now, CC Kinnison slowly regaining after that horrible collision on the intersection. And Fair Whiskey over the top and straight through ahead of Droska one more time. CC Kinnison, huge boost of speed as they go around to the next bend, trying to find the line off of that invisible wall, but they're slowing down as they continue around these bends. Into the eighth lap we go as Droska in first, Fair and Whiskey back into second. It looks like in the way back we have five other marbles just scrambling for position right now. Fair and Whiskey overtakes Droska coming through the next turn, but these two are having at it, and they need to be careful or they could end up eliminating each other. 
each other and leaving Cece Kinnison to take the victory by default. Here they go around the bend, narrowly dodging one another once again. The moves of Trehuska's vehicle seem to be unmatched. The handling almost well renowned now for Trehuska's car, and they are really putting it to the test here on this track. Fair Whiskey continues to hold it, and there it is! Trehuska shoots a spike out of the side of the tire of their vehicle, impaling Fear and Whiskey straight through the heart. Steve Irwin style, and that's gonna be a tragic end of Fear and Whiskey now, but CC Kinnison seems to have found a boost of speed, jumps over the top, Sensei Bulker coming up, they finally made their move, I don't know how, look at the speed of Sensei Bulker, they've absolutely gone ballistic, it's three marbles just having it out, all in front right now, Sensei Bulker from fifth place, half a lap behind, now into first place with some room to wiggle, is gonna be trying to push through into the final two laps, but Roskin and CC Kinnison aren't quite done yet, the marbles coming around in the next bend. Just two laps left to go as they try to make their move in across the line. Oh my goodness, Sensei Balker tries to overtake Troska, but troska has got spikes on that side of the car too. Absolutely geared to the teeth and Troska's taking no prisoners right now. CC Kinnison tries to make a move, but Troska's tire spikes continuing to impale the competition and both marbles are barely alive to tell the tale as they continue to fight in through that line. Okay, yo. Making a move back in fourth place at full health. Trying to use their full health. It's just been their plan the entire time to stay back in full health until the last lap and then make a move and take out the competition. Elsa the first about to be lapped by Drusko, or is Elsa the first deliberately staying behind to try to sabotage the first place runner? Drusko is just going for it. Absolutely unmatched speed. Where is Drusko getting all this going? I've never seen a more decked out vehicle in my derby history as a caster, ladies and gentlemen. But Drusko has done it. They came to play. They came to win the preparations unmatched here on the field between Nitro's tire spikes and who knows what they were using to boost their speed at the end of the race there, but the other marbles did not see any of it coming and they have paid the price dearly. Congratulations to Trahuska for absolutely slaughtering the competition here in this race and that's going to do it for the Shenanigans Marble Derby Classic number 36. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.